once upon a time, there was a mouse. This mouse was sitting on the creek's edge, minding his own business. He was almost done with his book, last chapter. He was so enthralled in his story that he didn't even notice someone was watching him. From behind the cattails was Weasel. He had a sack in his hands and slowly he tiptoed up on Mouse. And when Mouse wasn't looking, caught him in the sack, threw him over his shoulder. <laughs> Poor Mouse, he clung to the inside of that burlap sack. It's so dark in here, where am I? As Weasel was walking, he kept thumping on Weasel's back. When they got inside, Weasel took the sack and shook it out on his kitchen table. Mouse clung to the sides. Weasel shook it out again and then <coughs> Mouse fell out on the table. Mmm, perfect, said Weasel. Mouse, I was just thinking over what recipe I would use to cook you up. Out of the cupboard, he took out a sack of potatoes. From the pantry, he got onions and celery and garlic. He took out a cutting board and he sharpened a knife. Ching, ching, ching. Poor little mouse. His little nose was twitching in his tail. Weasel took the knife on the cutting board and the carrots. Chop, 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 chop. <gasps> Each time, the blade would come closer and closer to mouse. Weasel took all the veggies and put them in a pot. He started a fire and put the kettle over it. He put a little water in there, some butter, and he left the veggies to cook. He put on his glasses and he went over the shelf. Now, where is that old recipe book? Hmm, hmm. As things started to cook, Mouse had a very clever idea. Mouse said, you know, being a mouse, I know a thing or two about mouse recipes. Why, in my family, we've got this old, old recipe for mouse soup, and it is by far the best. Mouse soup, hmm. All right, well, what's in it? Carrots, potatoes, celery, onion, but the most important ingredient of all is stories. Stories? Yeah, stories. Well, I don't know any stories, said Weasel. Well, I do, said Mouse. Well, go ahead then, Weasel, said. Tell me a story. Once upon a time, there was a mouse, said Mouse. Of course your story's about a mouse, grumbled Weasel. That's all I know, said Mouse. Once upon a time, there was a mouse, and he was walking home through a field. And as he was walking, he passed under a great big oak tree. And as he went underneath, a swarm of bees fell poof, on his head. Oh dear, said Weasel. The bees began to buzz around him. Bzzz. Now, Mouse did not want a swarm of bees living on his head, but it was a delicate situation. The bees, they buzzed. Mouse, mouse, we've come to live with you. Oh dear, said Mouse. How do I get rid of them but still be polite? Excellent, said Mouse. Well, let me take you home and show you where we live now. Mouse made his way to the swamp. He took off his boots and he took off his socks and he stepped into the mud and he said, well, this is my front door. What do you think? And the bees, they buzzed. We love your fingers, we love your toes, we like your whiskers, we like your nose, and we love your front door. Excellent, said Mouse. Well, let me show you around a bit more. He rolled up his pants, and he stepped further into the mud. Well, this is my kitchen. What do you think? said Mouse. And the bees, they buzzed. We love your fingers, we love your toes, we like your whiskers, we like your nose. We love your kitchen and we love your front door. 
Oh good, said Mouse. Let me show you around a bit more then. Let me show you the upstairs where my bedroom is. And Mouse took another step and all the way up to his mousy belly button. Well, this is my bedroom, said Mouse. What do you think? We love your fingers, we love your toes, we like your whiskers, we like your nose, we love your kitchen, and we love your bedroom. Excellent, said Mouse. Now, I'm getting rather tired, so I'd like to lay down in bed. He took another step deeper into the mud, to the muck in the mire, was right up to his whiskers. What do you think, said Mouse. And the bees buzzed. We love your fingers, we love your toes, we like your whiskers, we like your noses, we love your bedroom. Excellent, said Mouse. I'm very tired and it's time for me to go to sleep now. I'm going to pull the cover so for my head. And Mouse went bloop, 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 and the mud went bloop, 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 bloop. And the bees, ooh, how they hate to get their wings wet. Bzzz, we love your fingers, we love your toes, we like your whiskers, we like your nose. But oh, no, 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 we do not like your house. I'm sorry, Mouse, but we are going to have to live somewhere else. Drat, said Mouse. Farewell, as he waved to the bees. And the mouse climbed out of the mud and went home and took a bath. Weasel chuckled. Uh, uh, uh. Good, good story. Ah, said Mouse, it is, but to really get that whole mouse flavor, that story flavor into your soup, you're gonna need more than one story. All right, said Weasel, but make it quick. I'm getting hungry. All right. Well, once upon a time, there was a mouse. Another mouse story, said Weasel. Don't you know any ones about weasels? I don't, said Mouse, I'm sorry. Once upon a time, there was a country mouse. It was a woman mouse and she lived out in the sticks by herself. She loved the peace and quiet. She loved how no cars ever passed by her road. She had hardly any neighbors at all, except for Mr. Grasshopper. And on this beautiful spring night, Miss Mouse was getting ready for bed. She left her windows open so that her curtains could dance in the breeze. She had a glass of milk by her side and she was reading a book. Her eyelids began to grow very, very heavy and at last she closed it and put it to the side. Slowly, she began to drift into a slumber. Miss Mouse dreamt that she traveled to the moon and that the whole moon was made out of cheese. She opened her little mousy mouth and she sunk her teeth into a giant cheese crater. <gasps> Gouda. She went over to another crater. <gasps> Gruyere. And just as she was about to sink her teeth into another block of cheese, she was awoken by a terrible disturbance. Cheep, 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 cheep. Cheep, 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 cheep. She rose from her bed. What is that racket? She went out her window and looked, and there was Mr. Grasshopper in the garden, practicing his violin. Oh dear, thought Miss Mouse. Pardon me. Pardon me, Mr. Grasshopper. Mr. Grasshopper was rather hard of listening. Mr. Grasshopper, do you think, do you think that maybe you could stop? What's that? You think I'm the top? Hold on a second. If you think I'm good, you really should hear my friend. And he ran off. Well, at least he's gone, thought Miss Mouse, and she laid her pretty little head back on her pillow, and she began to drift back asleep right back to that moon made of cheese. She went over to a crater and opened her mouth. <gasps> Bree. She went to another crater. <gasps> Wensleydale. She went to the third bite and <gasps> cheep, 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 cheep. Twice as loud as before. Oh my gosh, said Miss Mousy. What am I ever gonna do with this grasshopper? 
she went over to the window once more and she opened it up. Pardon me, gr Grasshopper, do you think you could stop for the night? What was that? You think we're out of sight? Hold on a minute. If you think we're good, you should see our friend. Oh my gosh, said Grasshopper, said Mouse, and she went back into bed and she tried to sleep. She stuck a pillow over her ears and she fell back to sleep. There was that moon cheese again. She went over, she took a great big bite. Swiss. She went over and took another bite. Chatter. Oh. And just as she was going for another bite, she was in tears. She went to the window. Grasshopper! Grasshopper, I'm trying to rest! What's that? You think we're the best? Oh, Miss Mouse, please. And he went on a cheep, 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 cheep. Mr. Grasshopper, it is the middle of the night and I am trying to sleep. Could you please go somewhere else? Well, why didn't you just say so? Said Grasshopper. And he left. <laughs> said Weasel. Now I like that one. Oh, good. But. If you want your soup to be really thick and delicious, really fragrant, you're gonna need another story. Weasel went over to his pot and he gave it a stir. The potatoes were still a bit hard. All right, said Weasel, but don't push it. Okay. So Mouse, I said, once upon a time, there was a mouse. Not again, said Weasel. This was a city mouse. She liked the hustle and bustle of the city. She liked cars going by. She liked to see her neighbors out strolling. It made her feel safe to live right in the city. There's the fire department right there, police department right over there. Being an elderly mouse, she found comfort in that. Now one day, the police officer Mouse, he was out doing his rounds, strolling the neighborhood, when he heard a terrible, terrible racket. Help! Help! Won't somebody help? Please! Oh my goodness, he said, and he ran to old Miss Mousie's door, and there she was standing out on the walkway. Come! Come! I need help at once! Come! Come! And she brought him in the house. What is it? said police officer Mouse. She held back her tears. She said, oh, just, just look over there. And he looked in the parlor, in the middle of the parlor. There on her couch was this great big pricker bush. Oh dear, said police officer Mouse. I do seem the problem. Well, hold on, I have some pruning shears and I'll come right back and I'll, I'll cut that pricker bush right out of your couch. <gasps> no, and then she was hysterical. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. The police officer Mouse, he scratched his head. So you don't want me to cut the pricker bush? Well, well, no. I'm upset because, because the pricker bush is, it's, it's dying. <laughs> oh my, said police officer Mouse. That is a problem. Well, have you tried watering it? <gasps> Old mouse, no, I have not. They went right to the kitchen and filled up a watering can and dumped the whole thing onto the couch. And as soon as they did, it just soaked up all that water and all of a sudden it started to spring all these green branches and buds formed and opened right there. And there are all these beautiful red roses. And old Miss Mousie, she dried her tears. Oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, police officer Mouse. And she trimmed a dozen of those red roses and gave them to him, and it gave him a big kiss on the cheek. That one was really silly, said Weasel. It was, said Mouse. Well, I think it's time for you to get the pot. Hold your horses, said Mouse. I think you still have some time here. Have you even tried it? Are the carrots soft? Does it need seasoning? We saw he went over and he fussed a little bit. 
Now, you might have time for one more. Those potatoes are still a little hard. All right, said Mouse. Once upon a time, there were two best friends. One of them was a very round, squat rock. And the other one was a very tall, lean rock. And they lived on a hill side by side and had... And as those two rocks sat there, the shorter, squatter rock said to the taller, longer rock, what do you suppose is on the other side of this hill? Why, I never wondered that before, said the taller rock. Hmm. Just then, Mrs. Robin was flying overhead and they shouted up, Mrs. Robin! Pardon, Mrs. Robin! And she flew down and landed on the taller rock. Yes, what is it? She said. We have a little favor to ask of you. We were wondering if you may be so kind as to fly over to the other side of this hill and get a good gander and fly back and tell us what you saw. I could do that, said Mrs. Robin, and she flew up so high in the sky she disappeared altogether, and she was gone for a very, very long time. Hmm, said the one rock to the other. What do you suppose she saw over there? I don't know, said the other. Perhaps, perhaps it's so lovely on the other side of the hill that she will never return. Yes, said the other. Perhaps. Just when they were ready to give up altogether, who should come flying back over but Miss Robin? And she said, Ah, oh, the other side of the hill is amazing. You guys are on the wrong side. Let me tell you, the grass is greener, the flowers smell sweeter, the sun shines brighter. I hate to tell you, but if I were you, I'd try to roll over there. Oh, so the two rocks. Well, thanks, I guess. And they sat there side by side, just feeling sorry for themselves for 200 years. Till at last, the one rock said to the other, what if Miss Robin was wrong? What if the other side is not nicer? Perhaps, Perhaps we should get a second opinion. Hmm, said the other, perhaps. Just then, a little field mouse began to scurry by. <gasps> field mouse, pardon me, field mouse, are you busy? Not terribly, said mouse, good. Do you think you could scurry to the other side of the hill, have a good look around, and then scurry back and tell us what you see? We don't have any legs, or we do it ourselves. Yes, squeaked Mouse. I suppose I could do that. And Mouse disappeared. They saw the grasses bend until he was out of eyesight. Now, Mouse had short little legs, and he scurried as fast as he could, but he was gone a great long time. I guess Mouse noticed the other side was nicer too, said the rock. Perhaps we shouldn't have told him. After many days had passed, who should come back but Little Mouse? And Little Mouse said, the other side is nice, but to be honest, I like this side a little bit better. Why is that? Said the rocks with their eyes wide. Well, you see, on this side of the hill, squeaked Mouse, you get to see the sunset every single day. And on this side of the hill, sat the two best friends I've ever seen. Oh, really, said the rocks. Who's that? Why, why it's you, squeaked the mouse. Weasel, he chuckled and said, all right, but that's it, you're out of time, mouse. You gotta get in that soup pot. Sure, but first, said mouse, you've gotta get the stories into the soup. Otherwise, it won't taste good. Well, well, how am I supposed to do that, said Weasel. Ah, said Mouse, good question. You must go out into the woods and collect a little bit from each story. 
from that first story, you must go and gather all of the mud and many, many bees. From the second story, you'll have to gather up 10 grasshoppers. And from the third story, from that one, you'll have to find the biggest pricker bush you can find. And from the last story, a round squat rock and a very tall lean rock. And then you must put those in your soup pot. All right, said Weasel. And Weasel was so hungry, he ran out of the house, leaving the front door wide open and unlocked. Mouse tiptoed out the door. But he followed Weasel from a safe distance. He saw Weasel collect the swarm of bees from a tree. Ow! 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 He got all stung up until his face was swollen and disfigured. He went down to the swamp and he tried to collect mud in his pockets, but it all just seeped down his legs. Soon he was covered in mud. His face was all swollen. And then he went to the thicket of the forest and found the biggest pricker bush with thorns bigger than my finger. And he began to pull and pull, but all it did was chew up his hands. And then eventually he took oh, and pulled the whole thing out. But he had the bees in one hand and all of the mud. How am I going to carry this pricker bush? He stuck it on his back. He went out to a field where he knew there was lots of grasshoppers and he caught them. One, two. Nine, ten. He went to the rock wall in the woods and he dug around until he found the tallest, longest rock and the roundest, squattest rock. And he had to kick those as he was walking, carrying the bees and the mud and the pricker bush. Well, when he got back home, Mouse, Mouse, I found all the things for the soup. M Mouse? He saw his front door wide open and he realized his mistake. <laughs> Weasel sniffed. Soup smelled good. <sighs> Defeated, he went over and he got a scoop and put it in a bowl and he sat down and he ate it. It was good. Now, little mouse, he scurried right home. He opened up his book and he finished every last page. The end. My name is Katie. I'm here from Wild Earth. That story was written by Arnold LaBelle. Thanks for listening. Bye.